If you were surrounded by a lot of people and someone of the opposite sex extended their hand to shake yours, what would you do? It's a very good question, actually. I don't know. If, I, I don't know the answer that to that towards you. Well, in terms of female, I would never shake any female hands because that's What's against my with it? that's against my religion. I would never break the rules because just sake of shaking the hand, I would never do that. Um, usually, I make it clear that I don't do that. Like, I usually put my hand on my chest. But um, you know, at work, some people look at me funny for doing that. Yeah. They would look at like, why don't you want to shake my hand? But. It's happened. I would give them whatever I'm holding. <laughs> it's, it's quite funny. Um, and if I can't, yeah. then I actually will just refrain my hand yeah. and and they look at you, the opportunity, and yeah. then I'll say, I'm so sorry, but, um, but we don't, you know, shake yeah. hands with opposite sex. And, and, and most of the time they know. Yeah. I'm finding a lot of people are very much more aware now. Yeah. Fair, as in, I, I do the same thing. When someone tries to put their hand out, I'll be like, oh, I'm so sorry, I can't shake your hand, but um, it's really nice to meet you. I think th that's literally what I do, and they usually understand. I've never had a situation where they didn't understand, mm -hmm. but I think it's different for everyone. And Yeah. Sometimes I try and just avoid the situation. Yeah. Like, I'll, like I'll just try not to really approach them. <laughs> <laughs> if I needed the job, you would shake his hand. Yeah, because I think it depends on your intention. Mm. I really think it depends on your intention. That's not, that's not, is, that's probably not what I should be saying, but I'm just being honest. No, but if if you need you. a job, you need a job. I mean, I've got two kids, do you get mm. me? So if I need that job, I'm going to go for it. Mm. But it, otherwise, ordinarily, no. You wouldn't? No. Not really. As in, yes, praying during the day, yes. But maintaining the, the timing, mm. it's so hard just because, you know, work and uni, the timings are so different. Is I can never go actually pray on time. I do find them um, hard. Well, sometimes as I'm at my work, yeah. I'm on a shift and there's a prayer time. I do intend to miss it. And I do find it sometimes a bit difficult to keep them on time. If I'm um, being very honest here between that stuff, you, well, know, you know me very well. Definitely. I, I, as I've been knowing you for several years, as you're my close friends, I agree with you in this actually, because I'm in the middle of work. And then obviously, if I need this prayer time, I, I would never get out of my disc because I'm not allowed to do this anyway. Because basically where our work is very strict, obviously there's a time you have to get up and just to pray. Because if you want to leave your disc to pray, it means that you're taken out of your prayer. So. so it's usually like if I'm in the library, like during exam time, it's fine for me because I'm in the library all day. And I'll just go up when it's time yeah. to go pray and then like come back. But if I'm at work, it's more difficult. Mm. Sometimes on my lunch time is all right, but it depends when can I take it, depending on other people and you know, yeah, okay. depending where I am as well. Some places are, there's nowhere to bro. Yeah, yeah. Particularly waking up for fajr. Mm. But now, um, alhamdulillah, I work in an Islamic environment mm. where uh, the prayers are built into the mm. workday. Mm -hmm. What would you do yeah. if your line manager yeah. prohibited you from praying on time at work? Um, he has no right to stop me from praying. That's a complicated one. Um, however, these days, you know, a lot of workplaces do accommodate. Yeah, they do. They have to legally. They have to, they have yes. to have a faith area or a prayer they have a prayer room a faith room a multi-faith room um, multi that's what they room. call it so but i think the timing might be difficult because our prayer timings change absolutely. throughout the year however they have no right to stop you yeah. from practicing your religion and you should follow what you're following exactly they have absolutely they have no right that's a very really difficult one I, um, why are they why what's their reasoning I'm assuming it's to do with prioritising work because they don't, obviously don't understand the importance of prayer. Like they don't think it's... Yeah, they don't think it's that important. Mm. There was a situation mm. in my workplace, like I work in a pharmacy, and one of the members of staff would like to separate their prayers. So they just go off and pray. And that caused issues because they would, first they wouldn't let anyone know. Yeah. So no one knew where they were. And it was in busy periods as well, like, so we were left alone. Mm. Like, it's just one of those things. Like, where... it's a smart thing to do, but it's uh, it's it's really sticky. If anything, I'll explain to him beforehand. 
I'll make him aware that there's a prayer time I need to go and set the time. I would definitely try to explain and, and, yeah. and say, and then I would be very flexible in accommodating yeah. my work to if they can yeah. accommodate my, my prayer time. It's only five minutes. My, at my workplace, it's don't ever force anyone to pray, but don't ever stop anyone from praying. If you mm. need to go pray, you go pray. You go do your thing. So you can go whenever? Whenever I, I, I can go whenever, unless mm. I've got like an emergency going on, because I work with young people and if an emergency goes on, I, it's not it, it's not physically possible for me to actually yeah. just walk, go out and pray yeah. mm, no I don't I, I, I think I think <laughs> I think culture is completely culture. different to the religion culture and religion are two separate things and people fail to understand that but they mix it up so much you know, they so they will keep saying, you know, this is haram, this is haram, this is haram. But realistically, it's not actually haram. Yeah. It's just not in the norm. Yeah. You just won't accept it. Your culture doesn't accept it. All the time. All the time, I agree. All the time, to the point where you have to live with your mother-in-law and in-laws after you get married, and that's part of the religion. Actually, it's not. It's not. No. Religion, um, religion is a different topic or culture is a different topic? What? It's forced on us or what we're obliged to do is you know follow our religion not what culture says to do but what other but things a lot of things a lot of things um you know what girls should wear what how they should speak yeah. um the differences between men and women the, the double differences sad between men and women um i think that that There's is a lot uh, of people. even things that we do in our religious things in mosque a lot of people are questioning now is what does this mean? Are we, is it part mm. of religion? Like the different rituals that we have. Yes. Um, and a lot of it's just cultural. I don't think so. You, that's that's that, only your I don't think opinion. So. Yeah, okay. that's my opinion. I don't think so. Culture can actually but factor the in religion. But the question is, do you think people mix? Yes, no. definitely people do actually. I've seen it in several occasions. People have you? Mix, definitely I've seen, it for, I've seen it in my eyes. People mix culture with religion. And I, I, I always read, I think that Islam advises you to separate with your Absolutely. wife doesn't mean you separate from meeting your family no, or of course. providing but just to live separate with your wife it's very very important i don't know about that i pers i personally think that culture that's you but i've seen it in I'm my eyes so i don't know yeah tell you mate yeah go on tell me but I'm, i said let me I'm, tell you because you you're, let me let me give you the, let, my, oh, my, right. my point of view right, i just think that culture quiet. culture yeah and religion are completely different topics Culture is something that you follow with your ha with in your house and then how you are and how you deal with your family. Oh, right. Between religion, two brackets, the way you brought up and stuff. Exactly. Right? Religion yeah. is yeah. something that you should follow, black and white. What you're supposed to follow, you follow it. Yeah, but you can't mix them together. Yeah, how? People do mix them. Okay. You can't control people what they do. I don't know. I think, you I think obviously I think, I think you have the no right to obviously to stop them with it because obviously that's their mindset. You can't yeah, change I anyone. Think... All right. Do you have any family members or relatives that practice other religions? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, on my mum's side. Then. No, I don't actually. No, not in my family. Um, no, my family, everyone. Everyone. I don't think anyone's not a Muslim. Um, no, not I know. Do you? Yes, my sister-in-law right. is Polish Catholic. Oh. Hmm. And how, how is she integrated? Is everything... Everything's fine. Um, yeah, everything's fine. Me too. Yeah. I think that's just, mm. just black and white. No. no. I think Muslims are extremely judgmental. I don't think Muslims are judgmental. I think people from different cultures and are judgmental. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Quite a lot of people. If you look on certain social media uh, platforms, mm. you will see a lot of our youth are becoming alienated mm. from our religion because they feel misjudged and misunderstood. So I don't, you know, the, the one thing that we're always taught is that Muslims should not be judgmental. And there's one piece of advice that I listened to in a lecture once and it stuck with me. It's, you should never judge anyone, but don't ever give anyone a reason to judge you. You can say to people what you think is right, but don't force them or don't say, oh, you will, go, you, you will go to the wrong road and all of that. Advise them to what you think is right and leave them 
they decide whether they take it on board or not take it on board. But what I was saying, Mithad, because everyone, Mithad, everyone Mithad. get measured and judged on their on own the actions, on their own actions, uh, on the above. So it's one of those things where it's just people are going to judge you either way. You kind of just have to make sure that you're not doing anything for them to judge. Yeah, there's this whole like character thing or like reputation. Mm -mm. And I always thought about it like, well, what I do is between me and God. So it's really none of your business. Yeah. But other people I know are very hot on culture yeah. and they're, they're how they're represented in the community. And I'm like, oh, well, I don't really care for their opinions. Um, there are members of my family who've actually turned apostate because of their experience, not with Islam, but with Muslims. That's very sad. Uh, especially in relation to Muslims being judgmental about a person's marital status, whether single or divorced, mm. uh, or in, re in relation to mental health. I need to be careful of what I do because people might perceive it as something else. They might interpret it in a different way. You just don't want people talking about you. Basically. Yeah. I can't, I don't have the right to judge my own brother. I'll advise him, but I have no right to judge him. But you and I know there's a lot of people around there of course they who do. judge you. I'm what you're doing you. is haram. What you're doing is wrong. And they turn around on I the other side. I know what they're doing behind the scenes. Exactly, yeah. and they turn around on the other side, they're doing all the haram things. Exactly. And obviously you don't get to see it. Yeah.